Um, no, I think we had, we had a, a big emphasis on red zone last week. Um, you know, we obviously had three days of practice. I think we did red zone two of the three. We usually only do, usually only do red zone once a week. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I guess we, we ran some short yardage situations uh, on Thursday before we got out of here. Uh, some live short yardage situations. We don't do a whole lot. So, I, yeah, I guess there's a bigger emphasis on it. Uh, I'm not really sure what he's really talking about. I think you just meant more the coaches were like getting on you guys to make sure you're doing it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, there was a bigger emphasis on it. So, with you being healthy and with Nick uh, Vanette playing the way he's been playing, you guys can obviously go a lot of two tight end. Does that help you guys be more versatile in the red, red zone? Yeah, uh, you know, it opens up a lot of different things for us. Uh, it opens up the run game, you know, for a lot of you know the fast guys we got, and then also. You know, it gives defenses a lot of different things they have to worry about. Uh, you know, with Nick and I both being, you know, big body threats and yeah, deep in the red zone. Uh, you know, it gives them a lot to worry about, and spe- you know, especially with all these skill guys we got too. Uh, you know, they got their hands full. So, Jeff, you're pretty good friends with Evan, right? Yeah, he's my roommate. What's it like being around him? What kind of person is he when you guys are away from football? He's awesome. Uh, I've lived with him, lived with him for two years now. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's obviously one of my best friends and. Uh, so I, I see him every single day. So yeah, the reason I'm asking is just a lot of times when people are going down the checklist of playmakers on this team, Evan's name doesn't get caught up, called up very often. With you know between Don Trey yourself and right. you know, all the other ones, uh, he seems to. But he's always on the field. Right. Um, why is he always on the field? And how is it as the basis instinct of any receiver to get the ball? How does he kind of stop himself from becoming frustrated, maybe getting lost in the shuffle sometimes? Um. You know, I, I think, you know, Coach Meyer and, you know, his coaching staff, you know, they do a great job of, you know, it's always team first. And, uh, you know, Evans, you know, Coach Meyer said, you know, before in team meetings that he's probably one of, you know, those, you know, most selfish, you know, players or least selfish players we have. And uh, so, you know, he does he does his job out there. Uh, you know, a lot of slant cracks on, uh, you know, with corners and some safeties coming down, you know, to get some of those fast guys on the edge. Uh, you know, he does a really good job of that. And uh, so, you know, like, I've been there before too. Uh, you know, you're out there on the field all the time, but you know, you're not always brought up in the playmaker situation. You know, conversations. So, uh, so, but yeah. Just to be clear, most selfish or least selfish? <laughs> most selfish oh, human being you've ever met. Selfless. selfless. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Sorry. Long weekend. You guys are sporting. Yeah, 168 points last year. When you look at the offensive production and you realize that the number of new players that you have. Does it? Did you still expect that, or does it surprise you a little bit? Uh, I think you expect it. Um, you know, we do we do a great job of you know. I think everyone understanding their role in the offense, and uh, you know, week in and week out, our coaches do a great job. Uh, you know, game planning against you know the defense we're playing, and uh, you know, you know, taking what defenses give us, and uh, you know, we have so many you know skill athletes, uh, you know, that can make plays on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, I don't want to say it's easy, but you know, having that many, you know, for the coaches and stuff, it definitely, you know, makes it a lot easier game plan. And you know, in years past, we haven't had that, and you know, I think it was a little more difficult, you know, not having as many weapons. But so I think this year, it's you know, you got so many of them, and you you know, have a lot of options as coaches, what you want to do week in and week out. So a lot of those weapons are new faces, given the fact that there's so many new faces on this offense. Are you surprised at how productive this offense has been this early? No, I wouldn't say surprised. Uh, you know, we kind of knew coming in the year that we, you know, we were gonna we were gonna have a lot of things, to, you know, to work with on offense. And uh, you know, I think you've seen that so far. Uh, you know, we got a lot of young guys playing, and uh, you know, even with Braxton being out, you know, there's, we've had other guys step up and uh, you know account for some of those yards that uh, you know we're missing out with Braxton not being out there. So, Curtis Grant kind of suggested that because Braxton is out because you guys suffered that early loss, that the chemistry on this team might be better than it's been in a long time just because you've gone through all that adversity together. Is that your experience on the offensive side of the ball? Um, yeah, I mean, we've all, you know, offensively, we've, we've had to come together. And, you know, like I said, we had to account for a lot of a lot of yards we're not getting with Braxton, uh, you know, out there. Uh, you know, you guys have seen it time and time again. You know, someone loses contain or something, he goes for 60, 70 yards. And uh, so, you know, yeah, we've had to account for you know, a lot of things that he's done offensively. And, uh, you know, that's where other guys have stepped up, younger guys have stepped up and, uh, you know, brought a lot to the table and helped us, you know, try and get over that home, so. Jeff, with the way you guys have been playing lately, obviously you guys are 
kind of showing people what kind of team you are. But the fact that you have the early loss as opposed to you know the previous two years, Coach Meyer, you guys were undefeated during the regular season. Just when you sort of like think about how you fit into the national picture and that kind of thing, is, is life any different just when you have that one little loss that's you're, you're dealing with early or does it not feel that much different week to week? Um, it's obviously a little bit different just because, you know, obviously you've been undefeated for two years in a row. Uh, but I think, you know, for the for the most part, it's, you know, it's we're worried about ourselves. Uh, we're trying not to worry about that. You know, Cincinnati win was, a, a you know, a real big confidence boost, booster for us. We really needed that game. And, uh, you know, obviously carried over into Maryland. And, uh, you know, those were two two good games that, you know, we played well in. And, uh, you know, coming off that Virginia Tech loss, uh, I mean, a bye week and then Kent State or Kent State bye week, <laughs> whatever. Those were, uh, those two, you know, those were two good games that we needed to play well in, and we did. And uh, so I think, you know, like all that stuff will work it out. Uh, but right now I think it's just kind of us, you know, trying to be as good as we can be. And I, uh, you know, I think we're, we've come miles from where we were uh, you know, when we played Virginia Tech, uh, you know, we're, you know, we've really built on that loss and, uh, you know, try and try to improve as much as we can. And I think we've done that. I think we're, you know, a completely different team than we were, you know, against Virginia Tech. And uh, I think it would definitely be a different outcome if we went back and played that game over. But, uh, you know, just how far we've come so far, you know, these last few weeks. So.